the next night. Let's go ahead and roll blood, ah. just in case something happens. I'm hungry! Ah, you can never hold on to it. Success. Success? Cool. Me hungry! Alright, so... Our Tremere is fine at one hunger, and the other two are at two hunger. Yay. Um, <clears throat> your sires, quote unquote, your sires, um, are each going to take you to a restaurant in town where they have told you that Masquerade obviously is paramount in their own ways. Masquerade is important. However, you are going to get a, a, a personal room. You're going to a restaurant that has been built. It is kindred owned. and is called Frankie's Place. They got that rebuilt. Though. They do have it rebuilt. It is not, however, in the Pearl District. Um, <clears throat> it's actually kind of an awkward place. Uh, damn insurance is too high over there now. Right? <laughs> Um, it is, it is just off of Old Town, Portland, um, and it is a old 1950s style, like, Frank Sinatra style place. You are getting a room rented out for you called the Rack Pat Lounge. Your sires have you all wait in the vehicles. You're probably stuck in the cars waiting for your sires for a good 20, 30 minutes. I'm tired of waiting in the car. Can we go to McDonald's? Does anybody do anything stupid in the meantime? I'm preparing up love teeny. <laughs> At this point. So you're drinking. How many of those do you think you go through? Uh, this is my first one of the night. Okay. So just one? I've So far. Cool. Why don't you go ahead and roll me a uh, uh, a stamina plus composure test? Yes, I understand they're both attributes. Are we literally rolling the dice to see if you're getting drunk? Yes, we're just going to see if he is down trace. That's, that's what we need is adventure acting like a jackass. Four successes? You don't get drunk. But you do know that if you have another one, you probably will be. And your sire is counting on you to not fuck up. In fact, please roll me one dice to check where your stocks are today. Eight. Eight. Okay, your sire is very happy with you. <clears throat> you're gonna get you're gonna be like eight, 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 like every night for like two months. And then like you're gonna get like a one and he's just gonna turn around. around and beat the shit out of you. I'm telling you, this dies are the monkey's paw. You're gonna find out that you have access to potions. <laughs> but you might want to invest in that that four or two. Right. <laughs> anyway. Um, so yes, after about a half an hour or so, your sires are going to collect you one at a time, obviously. And leads you inside of this very nice restaurant. There's instrumental Frank Sinatra music playing in the background. No, no, no vocals. Just, just an actual, like, four-piece band in the corner that's just playing out the melodies. Um, it seems to be just a classical Italian restaurant. The scent of garlic, parmesan, and tomatoes is in the air. And uh, the I'm already feeling vindicated for not taking that full color flaw. <laughs> and the uh, the proprietor, a very well dressed. I use Chris Pine. I don't know if anybody saw that. Chris Pine is Sunny Black. Um, a very well dressed young man is going to walk over, shake your sire's hand, welcome them back in, even though they had just left, and. Let's just go one at a time. Your character is probably going to arrive first with the way that your sire is. Then you, then you. <clears throat> so, your sire, who is dressed very formally, she would have asked you to wear your best clothes for this meeting. What would you dress like? 
Probably like a J.C. Penny suit that's trying Are not to look well like a J.C. Okay, so like an off the rack suit. I mean, yeah. Okay, so you look good. Cardboard out there too, not just. I mean, your guy in one bulky right now. You have a ni- you have a very nice, handsome avatar. Yeah, he and you're wearing a suit. He doesn't need that quite that much dressing up because he okay. just look, I I make this look good. So as you walk in, and this guy walks up, who's wearing a full out tux hmm. when he walks up. He is the most overly dressed individual here. The suit looks like it was made specifically for him because it probably was. The restaurant itself is gorgeous gorgeous and classic there are grape obviously probably fake grapes hanging from lattice work in the ceiling and they all have fairy lights worked into the stems the uh the tablecloths are red and white checker pattern very close to your shirt that you're wearing actually right now and there's a there's a small candle and a single rose at each of the tables. Whites, yellows, reds, blues. It's the most unauthentic looking thing in this place. Um, but yeah, like I said, the, sm- the scent of the food is freaking everywhere. Um, the floors are um, a blood red carpet. For a second there, you can probably go, that's intentional. Just in case. That doesn't show. And can I please get a wits and awareness from you specifically? You will all be getting wits and awareness <laughs> checks for your own things. Mm-hmm. Four successes. Yeah. There are various dozens upon dozens of weapons hidden in this place. Most people wouldn't notice them. You've seen all these weapons many, many times, however, over your years of training. This person wants to make sure that they can reach for a weapon at any fucking point. They are no more than five feet from a weapon at any time. You get brought back to a a separate room with a sign over the door that says Rat Pack Lounge. There are black and white photos of the Rat Pack. You're making me want to listen to the Rat Pack right now. No joke. <laughs> there are black and white photos of the Rat Pack all over the wall surrounding the door. The door is just a dark oak wood door. And unfortunately, they don't have that beautiful glass thing that they had before. Um, but you will be you'll be led in uh, led in by your sire, and by the gentleman who introduces himself as Sonny. He's very kind. At least he seems to be very kind. And he goes out of his way. You can tell it's almost forced to say your, to say your mentor, I'm sorry, it's mentor, not sire, to say your mentor's name properly. Uh, he calls her Miss Shahrazad and leads her to the room, arm in arm, as if they've known each other forever. Your sire is wearing her most impeccable fake happy face for this event. And we'll lead you to the room where there is a single table set in the center. There could be dozens in here. There is a stage with a full band set off to one side no one is there it's just the instruments there are there are wax figures photos um gold records in frames this is effectively a frank sinatra and the rack pack museum that you have um there are uh four roses in vases on the table and four seats and there is a small leather bound folding book at each of the seats Um, and your mentor leaves you 
the rest of them will be here shortly. Like, within moments. And she shuts the door behind herself. Your sire comes and gets you. Mm. He, uh... As he approaches the car, the driver gets out, opens the back door, and your sire is walking up as the door opens. All right. Are you ready to meet your new friends? As ever, sir, I will be. Okay. Now, keep in mind, as I said, we have a few people coming. The only ones that I actually know are here at the moment are Abano Hakim and a Tremere. So mind your tongue and be careful. Okay? These two are individuals you are going to want on your side. All right, this is neutral territory. It's owned and run by a Hikata, not a Camarilla clan. So we're in effectively enemy territory. But it's neutral, so let's head on it. Follow him right back. It's going to take you in. As he's walking in, as you, as you two are walking in, a beautiful Arab woman is walking out. They lightly nod to each other as she's heading on out. He'll even get the door for her, which he doesn't touch doors most of the time. He usually has someone do it for him. I will raise an eyebrow I'm like, is he actually doing it? Blush. That's a good idea. That's going to be suggested to all of you also. Blush of health. Seriously, if you're going into any kind of human area, it's a good idea. Also, in kindred society, it's a good idea because playing the part of a human is important. I'm trying to remember what we roll for blush because a rouse rouse check. just one rouse check. Well, it succeeds either way, but you get hungrier if you fail. That's all. And you pretty much look yeah. human for the rest of the night. Didn't base your fail, but I didn't succeed either. Yeah, I mean you can't really best your fail yeah, on check. it. Yeah. You just you. You, you, you win or tie. You, you win or fail. That's all. Yeah. And if you fail, you still get what you want. You just get a little hungrier. So same description that I gave before, obviously. The restaurant is celebrating a grand reopening at this new location. Um, as you all walk in, gentleman in a tuxedo walks up and... You're sticking with the name Winston? Uh, for my sire? Yeah. What was the last name? Oaks. Oaks. O-A-K-E-S. Gotta have an E. Pretentious fuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's gonna walk in, and the guy's gonna walk over with that one hand out to shake, the other one out to hug. Yeah, Stance. Glad. Yeah, bring in. <laughs> And he's like, get used to that. Winston, it's good to see you. Guests are already starting to arrive. Uh, and he, he turns and looks at you and he goes, is this your boy? Like, he's, like he's introducing a son at <laughs> communion. It's, it's... <laughs> you go, uh, huge smile, probably the biggest fake smile you've ever seen on your sire. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. And he, uh, what was your name again? Uh, Thomas. Gotta remember the names. He he introduces you straight on. He's like, "Yes, this is my uh, this is my uh, this is my associate Thomas. He's uh, he's he's an up and comer in the city. He's like, oh, I know, I know. I keep an eye on the stocks. And it's just a, it's a bunch of useless fucking banter, mm -hmm. but it's stuff that you would be like so used to by now. Mm -hmm. So same situation. I need a wits and awareness check from you." Uh, three successes. Three successes. <laughs> this place is not only new, it's expensive. So I feel right at home. <laughs> what I mean by that is as you're walking around, you catch little things here and there as you're going, you'll notice the slightly graying tips on the silverware where people have bit down on them too much. It's real silver. 
you're noticing that they have a distillery behind glass as a feature. They brew their own stuff. And it's a massive copper cistern. There is a lot of money in this place. This man that you're meeting, Sonny, as he's introduced to you as, is fucking loaded. He's probably a good person to know. Start taking notes. Yep. He gets introduced as... He gets introduced as... Thomas, this is Mr. Black. Sonny. Sonny. He shakes your hand. He's warm. Feels human to you. And uh, they lead you to a very large set of oak doors, which are opened to reveal that Rat Pack room, as I had described before, with one individual inside of it. And then you... Okay. <laughs> Let's see. You, you, who, as you approach you, the table, uh, rises and gives sorry. you a firm... Is that how you're dressed? Oh, yeah, yeah. Petition, yeah. handshake, and a big row of pearly teeth. Sorry. How are you dressed? Uh, tux. Uh, I want to say... I'm going to be the most underdressed out of the three. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, tux, right hand full of rings, one for every, every finger. Are, are you following the man ring code? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Do you know the man ring code? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to learn it because I'm actually buying uh, a ring for every currency. I will send you a link mm-hmm. to a page that I actually follow oh, on YouTube thing. that actually covers all of that stuff, including man rings. Alrighty. So, I will send that to you. I feel like I need to know. <laughs> yeah, I cur- uh, currently have the one I own is the pink earring. Yeah. I'm trying to like go little by little. Because I want to actually get him good looking ones. That's good. That's good. So, yes. So, your sire has gone... This is the best you've probably seen her dressed. Um, she's going to insist that you leave the coat at home. That you wear a sports coat or a dress coat of some fashion. And you actually button up your top, your, your shirt. You know that, that look, look that kids look. give their listen. parent right before they say but mom or but dad. Listen. Look as less wizard as possible. Look, <laughs> I don't care, but we are walking into a place in the city that has a dress code. He probably would have gone over to something similar to like a men's warehouse or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, there's bound to be something like that in there. That's fine. You can uh, Tremere's adventures to Burlington's Coats Factory. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding? Resources too. I'm going to their outlet store. All right. <laughs> Your sire. Your sire is very well off. As it is. She is dressed well, but you know that she doesn't like to dress like this. She finds it confining. Which is why she's probably okay with me dressing like this most of the time. She doesn't care as long as you're comfortable. Are you dressing fine? No, it's Constantine. Hmm. She finds it very confining and restrictive. She does not feel like she gets the full use of her blood sorcery if she's feeling like that. So, yeah, I I had her embraced in the 60s. She's probably an old Wiccan. She likes to probably practice Skyclad. Skyclad. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So, she will probably own a Maserati. A very, very nice Maserati. She will have a driver, and she will sit in the back. She never sits in the front. She does not like to drive herself. The car scares her. She bought it for status, and status alone. 
She doesn't like it. She doesn't like the fact that she owns things for status. In fact, she'll bitch about it the entire time. But she has it because it's expected. And she's trying to gain status for House Karna. It's very, very hard to maintain a we are not asshole mages like the other Tremere, but we're also not gutter witches. <laughs> and she's probably used the phrase gutter witch many, many times when talking about the Obsessionist Tremere. <laughs> yes. Um, well, that's originally what I wrote in this character. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. So, she has a white Maserati. And she leaves you in the car with the driver for about a half an hour or so. When she finally comes back out and comes and gets you, the driver will get out. It will let you out of the car. Okay. So... Everybody else is already in there that I think is actually showing up. Okay. Okay. So, you your best behavior. She double checks. You used blush. Like she says that. You used blush. She's going to make sure I buttoned up my shirt yes. completely. Yes. She'll fix your tie. My tie is hanging down here. <laughs> she does. If you were pulling on it in the car, she fucking fixes it. Probably was. Yeah. All right. I would love to give you some kind of like word of advice or warning or anything, but I also don't want you to be. I don't want you to have some kind of like pre established conception of these people. I don't know them. I know their sires, but they're not their sires. Everybody's a different person. Exactly. So try to give them a chance. Please. She just expects you to be rude right off the bat. She's like, please behave. <laughs> what do you think I'm going to do? We are. And she like looks around as if somebody's... She, she looks around as if she's expecting somebody to be watching her. We are the most hated and despised clan in the camp. Notice how she dodged the question, what do you think we're going to do? It's not about what we you know, do. She thinks I'm going to set the building on fire. It's not about what we do. Kind of it's about what they expect from us. Table. And I don't want them to expect anything. So you're going in there meeting a bunch of people who are literally as ignorant as you are on the whole situation. I do expect them to have had training in the ways of the Camarilla obviously the kindred themselves and whatever expectations but none of them have really had interaction with other kindred other than their sires understood I will try to behave okay she is going to not ask you or anything but she's just going to slip something in your pocket just in case. Okay. And she'll turn and start walking into the, into the restaurant. Full on description, as I gave before. Please give me a wits and awareness. Two, three, three successes. Great. Right. Cool. The moment you walk in and you hear the music drifting through the air, and you smell the food, and you're met with the calming, dim lights of candles and fairy lights that are worked into the grapes. There is a shit ton of occult symbols worked into every facet of this place. Stuff that you're not 100% fully aware of what it means. Oh, that's fine, because I've got craft specialized in drawing, and I'm probably going to note down every single occult symbol I cool. can. Cool. But yeah, every. The lattice work, every crossbar of wood has something carved in it. The, the designs on the back of the chairs, the fabric has stuff. There's 
all the same color, but patterns in the carpet are all wet, are all bound with something. I'd like to roll my occult to identify as many of them as I can. Sure, sure. Intelligence plus occult. One, two, three. Only three successes on that one. Three successes? I'll give it to you. This place is crawling with necromantic energy. You can feel it. Wait, it's still another... It, it's another branch of magic. Mm-hmm. So, therefore, it is interesting to my character. You actually have a hard time keeping your eye on things, but there's actually a lot of movement around oh, with Sense the Unseen. Since that's going on, I'm going to activate Sense the Unseen. You don't have to. Oh, okay. Sense the Unseen is just something active. And as you walk in, there's just so much movement of stuff on the other side. This place is haunted. He's got friends on the other side. But it's purposefully haunted. There's actually a couple of items that you can see that are giving off a strange glare here and there. I'm going to kind of look around the building. Interesting. And just as you're getting all of that, a man, two men, actually, in tuxedos, are walking over to you. One of them, uh, an older gentleman, he's got kind of longish, wavy hair, but it, it suits him, it looks right on him. He's kind of wearing a suit that's you probably wouldn't fucking notice. He's wearing a suit. Anyway, he's he, he walks over, and uh, he looks at your sire. They, uh, they exchange pleasantries. He kisses her hand and says, I would stay if I could, but I desperately have to be going. Uh, and then he turns to the other guy in the tux, who's younger, gives him that two-hand shake, um, and says... Be good to my boy. And turns and starts walking out. Your sire, you can see, has a little bit of a roll of the eyes when that happens. <clears throat> and, go, and she just goes, Sonny, I would like to introduce you to Cindy. Or Sydney? Sydney. 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 Okay. Sid. Sonny, I'd like to introduce you to Sydney. Um, he has reservations. And Sonny kind of laughs at her way of putting that and gives her a hug. And you can kind of see this, like, if she had not used Blush of Life, you probably would not notice the goosebumps on her bare shoulders. The straightening of her spine. The, I don't want to be touched by this fucker. (laughs) 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 No. (laughs) It's a hug. Of necessity. That's all this is. Um, and then as soon as they let go, she's smiling again. And I was like, oh, the new place looks great. Like, I love what you've done with the place. Like, you've done really, really well. Like, it's a bigger location than the last one. And a lot of pleasantries. And you can tell that he's fighting back disappointment at the same time in the conversation. Like, yeah, it looks great, but I miss the old venue. And things like that. Yeah. And, uh... He'll, uh, uh, your sire turns to you and says, he lost the, he, he lost the original storefront in the, in the riots. Oh, understandable. Yeah. A, a lot of businesses were lost during that. Yeah. Sorry to hear about that. No. Well, Savage. He just outright said Savage just Agreed. And then starts walking you over to these doors and he goes, your companions are awaiting you. Thank you. And you guys want to have a couple minutes before he comes in? It's just you two in a room. So tell me a bit about yourself. I've I've heard that you're a highly successful business person. Yeah, uh, I started uh, with a very small company stealing uh, gin. Uh, Eventually managed to get some... Good contacts. A few of my friends were uh, stockbrokers, so money 
came out pretty quick. Hmm. Uh, eventually, uh, I managed to get my uh, my, first, my very first big distillery. Huge success. And uh, here in town. Right now, yeah. Uh-huh. You should. Uh, my brand is uh, quite popular right now. Apparently, uh, it's the uh, Blind Man's Gin. Hmm. Uh, we have a few distilleries we're currently in the city. We're currently expanding to other cities. You pardon my my amusement. When you say distilling gin, it may be a bit stereotypical for Hakimite, but I hear something slightly different from what I think you mean. And I don't think you can distill them. Mm. He doesn't prepare. Uh, out of character, he doesn't. He's, not he's the, never. He's, he's not never prepared. He pays people to do it. <laughs> he's not getting the pun either from the look of it. Mm-hmm. Not okay. Oh, that took me a second. Yeah, that's ah. funny. Yeah. David. David's not getting the pun. He's not getting the pun. Okay. Out of character. Might, out of character. I actually do think you do distill gin. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that is how it's made. Your joke is fucking hilarious. Putting that out. There. Is that how you get them in the lamps? That is hilarious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shit, I just broke my train of, my train of thought right there. Uh, other than that, it's uh, like I said, I'm trying to invest, expanding into other cities, uh, going into the market for other liquors as well. Mm. The sure sign of success is diversification within the niche. Right? Mm-hmm. One taken care of you so far. Hmm. Speaking of diversification, have you heard about the third who's to join us? Uh, yeah. You can probably. enter whenever. <laughs> That's perfect time. Here, uh, oh, where's the other guy? Uh, ah! I was gonna wait for them to start talking shit and then walk in. <laughs> oh, speak of the devil! Come here. <laughs> Yeah, here's so it's uh some du- uh, some gentleman from uh, Clan Tremere. Ah, yes, I had heard that as well. Which is, uh, you might be the Banu then. What gave it away? I don't judge people by the looks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And I've heard they're very open right now. Hmm? And I've heard they're very open right now. Mm, yes, well, there's all times. But I think that's what I've been told to expect of our premier as well. They say he's from a fairly non-traditional branch of that lineage. Mm. Have you had any doings with the premier before? Mm, can't say I have. Not so much. Heard the name, heard bits of bits and pieces of her story here and there. Other than that, can't say I've met one myself. I've heard a great deal of the reputation, but I don't oh, think I've ever way. met one in person. I'm You're Thomas. going for the second handshake thing? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> Thomas, yes. Uh, <laughs> fear me. Sorry, come again? Uh, fear me. Fear me? Fear me. As in fear me? Fear me. <laughs> mean. Fear, he's mean. I apologize ahead of time. David's gonna be fucking upsetting it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Don't take it as in character. Be fucking How up. do you it's spell it? Because my tongue is gonna fuck up. M I N F I R. Cool. Because F E A R space M E. When you say that the Cuban and space. Hispanic mentality Y-E-S, goes in space I space M E A N space Y O U space D A V I D. Why not? Oh God! Fun. So, what's your uh, what's your shtick? Shtick. Well, uh, I don't know that I exactly have it would uh, say that I can be pigeonholed that easily. I'm fairly new to the USA, in fact. Welcome to the land of the dollar and the free. Interesting juxtaposition you put there. The dollar and the free. 
Exact opposites, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Everything is free, and here's the price tag. We're just a big money grinder. Mm. And I'm going to go ahead and come in at that. Speak of the devil, and he shall appear. In the form of a advancing Tremere. Come, come, have a seat. You'll get the smile and the politician handshake, unless you strongly reject it. Oh, I was kind of expecting this. <laughs> you were dreading it, you know it. Hmm. Good selection. <laughs> uh, so, so, you, what? so I guess we are all here then. Uh, we're still missing a fourth, but... So to remind you, there's a rose at each of the seats and also a folded leather, like, little booklet thing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I was snooping him next. <laughs> it's gonna be oh, a, is it gonna be it's a, a menu. Ah. It's a blood menu. Ah. Oh, I thought for a second it was gonna be like... A black book of contacts. <laughs> taking a, reaching my hand out in just my pocket and taking a quick kind of. <laughs> I know him. I know him. I know him. I hate him. It's <laughs> a, it's small, about maybe the size of a quarter. It's a small, slick. It feels wet, but it's not stone. With a, a little bit of a red gloss. Okay. In- intelligence and occult, and I'll tell you exactly what it is. <laughs> you're a beta. <laughs> you you're a beta, and it's not on your sheet. So throw me a test. Well, th- there, there were certain things I wanted initially, but it? they didn't it is have baby. it. <laughs> they reached in my pocket. What is it? It's a baby. <laughs> A whole baby? <laughs> no, it's a whole full size baby. <laughs> One, only, two, only three. I, I'm just keeping three sets of drums. It's a track. <laughs> you, you don't exactly know how it works, but you know it's thaumaturgical. Okay, so this is, is the bloodstone yeah. ritual. Yeah, I was actually looking pr- for a principal focus VT infusion from the old. Uh, I don't care for that one. If we have to bring old rituals into V5. Okay. We'll figure it out. That was one of my go-to rituals. If you want that instead of Ward versus Ghoul, you can have it. Very tempting. I might still buy it. Make up your mind before you use that. Oh, I mean, I know that my sire can pretty much take care of wards either way. Yeah. Alright, anyways. (sighs) Okay. So your sires dragged you to the shindig too, huh? Oh, it's a great opportunity, isn't it? Many of people. There's a small brass bell in the center of the table that is in arm length, arm reach of anybody. If anybody wants to order, ding ding ding. Hmm. I'll take a look at the blood venue just to. There's a full-on description of what everything is, but basically, for mechanical reasons, we'll break it down to its resonance. Sanguine is the perfect humor for a social gathering, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's very much mm-hmm. about that mingling togetherness. Mm-hmm. Perhaps a little too much. Everything in moderation. Mm. Um, and it's also is the same one needed for uh, blood sorcery. Yes, it is. <laughs> Uh, I want to go through the book and like look at the. Did they give you like description of the person as well? No. Just tell you the. No, it's the description is basically like angry, frustrated, sparks of <laughs> sparks of hatred, um, with a ta- with a bad tannic aftertaste. He beat the shit the this guy in the street and stole his blood. The description yeah. is 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 basically just a whole bunch of different ways of saying what you're gonna feel from it. Mm. Um, everything says that it's like pure, humanely collected, blah blah blah. It's it's mm-hmm. it's it's ridiculous. It sounds like a, ba- a, a bad <laughs> free range commercial. farm to table local, straight off the bus from Nebraska. Kind of like <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Like. Uh, pick up Sanguine and uh, or, uh, 
when I uh, ring the bell. Uh -huh. And when I ask for the menu, it's, it's like, say we're all uh, can you add gin to it? Sure. Finding some small amount of common ground right at the beginning. Um, a uh, guy comes in and takes orders. Is there oh, anything? Sang you guys want anything? Yes. Sanguine. Sanguine? As he's just getting ready to go, he's like, you hear somebody say, make it four. And another guy walks in. He's got kind of wavy, unkempt, but stylish hair. Thin guy, kind of sunken eyes. He's youngish. Looking, maybe in his ah, and our party is complete. Politician handshake and coming. Hi, he shakes your hand. I'm John. So, <laughs> sanguine sounds great. Is this uh, our Nosferatu or no? Or I mean, he might be. You don't know. He comes in, introduces himself as John. Is the seat taken? Not at all. Not at all. Cool. Cool. Hi. <laughs> Sorry if I'm making everybody uncomfortable. <laughs> it's our mysterious fourth. Well, Come, have what, a sit, drink with us. That's what social a gatherings are for, is to make people uncomfortable. Don Dale. You see, I'd have to disagree with you. Social gatherings are so much more of an opportunity than that. Well, you, yeah, I mean, meeting like, new technically... People, learning... Yeah. Meeting new people, building contacts, and... Speaking of, sorry. John. Sid. Sid. Fermin. Fermin? Mm. Nice. With the accent, Fermin. Oui. I like it. Thomas. Thomas. He'll actually talk to you in French. Sure. Just I'm to let you know. <laughs> he, 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 he just, he greets you. He doesn't try to explode into a conversation. He doesn't want to exclude anybody else. But he does... So, John, tell us a bit about yourself. Are you uh, to be presented soon as well? Um, not exactly. Not exactly. I'm already... I mean... Mysterious. Yes. I mean, treat. Yes and no. Um, yes, I am going to meet uh, our prince. Um, but I'm not new to the Elysium scene. So you've met the prince before? Not this one. Not this one. You've been around since the ancient regime, then. I mean, last year, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell, us, tell me all about it. Uh, which part? Surprise me. Um, okay, uh, I have had... This will be my third prince in this city. Hmm. You've stood the test of time well, then. Sure. Either that or the city just hasn't... I am, I'm currently talking places. about last year. <laughs> um, no, we actually had a... We had a venture prince by the name of Merrick. Really nice guy. Um, he defected to the Anarchs. Um, you can see him, he's shaking my head. Uh, he's actually the child of the prince that was before, but that was before my time. Um... And then we had uh, Billy Smith, who was a Bruja. Um, and then um, and then the Anarchs took over. And now we got a bunch of fucking savages. And now we got the guy we got now, um, Darian King. A very apropos name for a prince, wouldn't you say? But you haven't met King yet. I have not met King yet. Heard I've heard him. rumors. That's what. Oh, have you? Mm -hmm. What's the most interesting? Uh, he was an Archon. An Archon. Enforcer of the Camarilla. Yes. Yeah, he's very, he was very formidable then. Sure. I guess. I, I mean, I would assume you'd have to be to be an Archon, right? Yeah. But why would you step down from a position like Archon to be a... I mean, I wouldn't, want to be the, I wouldn't want to be the death dealer for the Camarilla. Yeah. And that, my good man, right there is the million dollar question. Why? I wouldn't... That, that's not something that I would choose to do. So, Here's Prince, here's Arkham. What would you step down? I mean, 
Is it a progression? Do princes strive to become archons? One would presume so if it's hierarchical. I mean, that's saying that there's a progression that's linear. Like, I can see a prince wanting to become, like, a Justicar. That's above a prince. But what's above? An Archon is just a lackey of the Justicar. In that case, the question might be more more fittingly phrased as why didn't he stick it out in an attempt to become a Justicar? That this seemed more preferable. That's true. I mean, traditionally, from what I understand, they change Justicars like every 13 years. And presumably, they so. tend to choose from the pool of Archons. Yeah, if they don't just keep the position. Mm. So. Um, but uh, I also, um, I own, <laughs> I own the competition. I actually own a restaurant down the road. Oh, do uh, you? Yeah, yeah. We actually just opened around the same time. We ended up having to blow out the same way that the, the uh, old Frankie's place did. Um, I was, we were already shut down. I was moving locations beforehand. Uh, but yeah, the Penny Diners Club. Is this uh, an enormous child? Yeah. Okay. I'm like, I know that, like, the name sounds familiar. It's my youngest NPC. He's got yeah. Sorry, like I said, the, the name I haven't seen him play in a while. So. Not to mention, Ventru, Bono Hakim, Tremere, Nosferatu, Toriador. You got the complete set. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and no Melkavian. Thank the fuck God. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I, I own the Penny Diners Club down the road. Oh, also, self promotion. Um, I uh, we we serve us at the Penny Diners Club. If anybody needs like food, we do that there. That may have sounded a bit more ominous than you meant it to be. Oh, I don't <laughs> serve us. We service us. Sounds kinky. That sounded a bit more risque. <laughs> that one sounds kinky. Okay, it's a private establishment with willing donors who you get to come in, spend time with, have conversations with, get to know, and feed at your at your want. See, you, a few a few extra words here and there can save so much misunderstanding. How does that work out? Considering, I mean, wouldn't that be a massive masquerade breach of any of these buildings? Up There's a lot of blood dolls out there, and keeping them in the circle and safe is actually our highest like concern because there's so many people that are out there, like. A lot of kindred lost their lives over the last couple months here. Where do you think all their ghouls go? We wean them off of being ghouls, but... But they're already in the know. They already know, and some of them have years of experience that we can't just erase. So, we do have a lot of former ghouls as employees... And they get paid very, very well, as it is, for what they give us. And and it's an asset to the masquerade. And it's an asset to the masquerade. I was just so, curious in case any of them ever decide, well, I'm going to start blabbing to my friends about this. and uh, um, But they'll be so much less incentivized to try and find a profitable way to disclose their unique story. There is that. And they'll know that they're under the eye. Even yes. That, now that they've that lost their first master. Most of them won't go out and say anything. So, I'm Toreador. I'm of Clan Toreador. Ventru. Ventru. Hakim. Bono Hakim. Very nice. And Tremere. And Tremere. Okay. I heard that we were, like, going to be meeting a lot of young ones coming into the city, so. So you say Toreador. Mm hmm. What's the worst of us for I don't. I'm sorry. I ne- uh, my sire didn't describe how the Nosferatu looked, so he said you'll be surprised. 
Are you certain they're not already here? I don't. Well, uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't know exactly who was all supposed to be coming. So I don't know. I was asked to come because I have a little bit more experience, and meeting new people, it would be a nice transition. Well, have you heard any rumors? Feel free or... to share the benefits of your experience. Yeah, sure. Since you've been here for a long time, and older than us at that point. Not, probably not much. Hmm. Hmm. Any rumors are you, uh, who you think are going to be the, uh, the seats, uh, the new permission? Mm -hmm. Oh, I have no idea. Um, I do understand that your sires are probably in the running, but it really depends on social politics and, and all that stuff. I'm not really sure what's going on as far as Elysium goes after last week. So, uh, Pretty much was. every single time he's like, he tries to bring the cup and now Noah starts talking again, puts it down. Okay. <laughs> um, last week, uh, the Anarchs... Um, attacked what we were going to use. That sort of affair. Actually. Yeah, as our Elysium. Savages. I actually know a few of them. I could never do that kind of stuff, but like most of them just seem misled. Either that or really crappy sires. That's where we get a set of rules. Without them, we're animals. God, it's so weird to ask. Um, this sounds like such a weird question. Uh, I, I know the Tremere used to be, like, really tight-knit. Do you know, um, Harker? I haven't met Harker. I, I don't think so. Probably not. No. No, um, if he's part of the established... The typical establishment, Tremere. He's not really. I don't really hang around with him. He's not really. Um, okay, I just figured I'd ask. Nobody's seen him in a little while. With everything that was going on. I don't always ask my sire later. Mysterious. Yeah, um, he goes by a fake name. Jonathan Harker. Ha! Ah. I know. But... I won't make fun of him. I promise. He's a nice guy. You know, so when he, uh, they're gonna bring in the glasses and stuff or refill if we need them. Do you know when was the last time he was seen? Hmm? Do you know when was the last time he was seen? Before the attacks. I'm not 100% sure if he came back from Chicago or not. You could still be in Chicago. Hmm. So if you're not familiar with this administration, though, what about the city? Oh, I know tons about the city. What can I... Well, it may, I may be beating a dead horse again, but the, the most amusing thing you can think of. Uh, there's a giant red wagon in the park. He'll, he'll name which park. <laughs> like a... Like a, like the, a radio flyer. What's, what, is it there to be fixed? No. It's just big. We got this like the size park. of a school bus. It's a very I actually used place. to know a gang girl used to sleep under it. Ah. Portland's weird. It is kind of our thing. Yeah. Keep it weird, as they used to say. Well, I mean, if <laughs> yeah. Mayor Wynn has his way, it, it won't be for very long. For I don't think he's going to be mayor long if he does that truthfully, because, like, mm -hmm. Portland loves its... Kill this. It's kill wearing Darth Vader with a flaming bagpipe on a unicycle kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I almost expect people to uh, you know start protesting out on his lawn. If uh... we had a mayor a few years ago who rode through the entire streets of Portland dressed up as King Arthur, and his deputy mayor was Patsy clicking coconut shells as they ran through the streets. Oh, that's funny. They're just that's fucking goofy, hilarious. Goofy people. See that? Why? Why can't that person still be there? <laughs> um, interesting things about the city. Um, don't we have the smallest park? We do have the smallest park. It's one tree. Yep. It's pretty small. 
Um, it's the last of its kind in Oregon. So, it's protected. Um, they, de- they decorate it for holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, Make for a very awkward picnic. <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> Do you want mundane fun stuff about the city or stuff about our society? Yes. This is a social occasion. Be to both. Um, okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. I said about the... Said about the wagon. Um, we have a Zemitsi that lives on the mountain. Actually, a couple of them. Um, they apparently don't have... At least they claim to have no association with the Sword of Cain. And, uh, it's yeah. kind of a you-don't-go-on-their-territory-they'll-stay-out-of-yours kind of situation. Piddick Mansion. They are there. The creepy place on, Good on the mountain? Yeah. The the big tourist trap that they don't do tours with anymore? That place. Um, I used to go there when I was a kid. Well, it was probably because the house Let's see. I told you about the tree. Um, let's see. Like You guys are coming in at the tail end of that massive war that just broke out. Um, that I have heard of. So there's that. How did the war start it? Um, there was a pretty brutal Sabbat attack last year. Like on New Year's. Like not this New Year's, but the one before. Mm-hmm. And um, apparently uh, they couldn't get this group of Sabbat under control. And the Sabbat made a deal that they would leave if the Camarilla left. Where did the Archons when you need them? Well, they showed up. And the war broke out. But, um... Yeah, um... The Sabbat uh, made it so that one of the um, one of the Anarchs was put in charge as a Baron or whatever the hell they call them. Um, and um, then it became a turf war between the Anarchs and the Hekata. How How is the Sabbat able to dictate terms for the, for the entire city, though? That is the other part of the war. When the Anarchs started fighting against each other, because there were the Anarchs who refused to acknowledge the fact that the Baron was put in charge by the Sabbat. I can understand them being upset. So eventually, though, um, the Baron stepped down, and well, I'm relying on you for the commentary this morning. Eventually, the Baron stepped down, I you as much and as you I don't like. Um, from what I understand, I was I not there. The but from what stories. I understand, the Sabat uh, that pack was I'm trying killed. to get out of my element. Expect, like I said, expect. So that pack's gone, and then the Camarilla moves back in. Something about some kind of deal that if the Camarilla helped get rid of the Sabat pack, that they would basically be allowed to reestablish what they had, but it wouldn't be in a, like, a, we're coming in and boom, taking this thing. Uh, they were basically given the Benson Hotel. And then last week, the Anarchs attacked the Benson Hotel. The Benson Hotel, uh... If I remember right, it's where the... the so in other words, the, we're, we're just... It's we're, the we're, famous, Someone uh, has lit the fuse it's already. We're just uh, waiting for the big explosions. Um, neutral ground. Neutral ground. Basically, the Anarchs are doing what the Anarchs do. Where art and culture are to be enjoyed. So, savages? Savages. They're so not sure who attacked the Benson, but... Uh, my money's on the Anarchs. We know it was the Anarchs. We don't know which Anarch. Yeah. Once way too many. Um, so, I mean, there's lots of weird stuff about Portland. I'd be happy to do a tour at some point. Um, but, uh, well, tell me about you guys. Uh, so, relating all the information about the company, all the businesses we do. Uh, trying to explain like we're trying to expand right now to other 
businesses as well. Airgen's doing well. Like I said, we're trying to expand. We want to go more than two CDs or go full national, then become international if possible. Oh, wow. That's uh, some broad ambitions you got there. If we got the time, might as well enjoy doing something. That's true. <clears throat> That's true. I thought about, I don't know, my idea, the pen, getting the Penny Diners Club up was... A virtual franchise for all we know. There actually are people who are, or other, you know, other kindred who are out there doing the same thing. I have no significant business at Acumen or great expansion plans. I need a place to take up residency. Okay. I can help you up in the room, no problem. Hmm. Well, that's entirely to the, uh, to the prince to decide, no. Getting, like, a set place, hmm. domain kind of thing. Well, I would normally home. suggest the Benson, but, uh... Ah, no. <laughs> no. That never sit right with me. The idea Burn. of the Vampire Hotel. Just... <laughs> I, yeah, I apologize if anybody's offended by the word, but... No, it's just I mean, really what we are. It is odd, though, that we would not only hold our meetings there... But some of us would live there, too. I yeah, mean, some of the higher members of you, the city. You would think that would attract unwanted attention. I, I believe it did. It was attacked uh, yeah. more than once. <laughs> I mean, usually Elysium is like technically the de facto yeah. home of the uh, council. Well, this was like a... Like, this was like a frontier city. like, And it was like Camarilla from its foundations. So it's cool that there's a lot of historical value in it, especially since there hasn't been. It, it seems like there's been a lot of princes because I was like, yeah, I've had three in the last year. But aside from that, there's only been one. So that's pretty, pretty historic. That's pretty cool. I never met him. I heard he was a nice guy. Painter. Venture. Whatever. Never met him. I was embraced when he was here, but unfortunately, I was not released yet. Oh, okay. so. Yeah, I hear you guys do a lot of like intense training and stuff like that. Yeah, lear learning the learning basically from scratch how mm -hmm. to work. I spent about a year being treated like a spoiled brat for my sire. Who was your sire? Um, she used to be, um, Harpy and Primogen of the city. Her name was Anna Roma. Why the position? Uh, but yeah, I mean... I who will hold it next. Before I was... Taking all bets? Before I was embraced, I was just kind of a pet for a while. I can't complain. My, my sire has helped me get my business off the ground and, uh, do that. Spent five years there's training. Like there are yeah. Arbon still lives here somewhere. Arbon? On the council? My grandsire. Weirdest guy in the world, first off. But my grandsire always insisted on me having friends in the gangrel. Before the gangrel left the Camarilla. So. It's sad when somebody loves the Camarilla. Doesn't happen often, but it happened twice. So, but yeah, he, he was always obsessed with uh, learning odd things and um, animalism. I got to pick that up. That was pretty cool. Mm. That was a lot of fun. Well, there's all kinds of interesting things to learn if you are just got the right kind of connections. Mm. Well, like the first couple of years after I was embraced, I was just, I refused just refuse to drink from humans. And he's like, you need to learn. If you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna if, if you're gonna only them. feed off animals, you're gonna have to like breed your own or something because we can't just keep going out and buying guinea pigs and rabbits. You need to follow so. your instincts and hunt. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean I, I just I became an animal breeder for a while, but like it's so hard on them, I just couldn't keep it up. 
like a lot of the smaller ones who breed fast, you walk into the room and they catch on to the beast and they'll just die. Like if they don't have a place to go, like no place to run, you walk in and they freak out and just die. They have little heart attacks. So have you have you tried opening a farm? It's it's a little difficult. Larger animals, it's always you can always do rotation. Yeah, but there's a potency that you need to take in consideration as well. Mm. Like not <laughs> I'm giving you guys advice like I'm your side. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Um you got my interest. So has has anybody here fed on animals? Most kindred it's don't. Not recommended. Most yeah. most kindred don't recommend it. Not only because it's considered like rude in polite kindred society, but also because it's actually highly difficult. One, the animals are terrified of you, no matter what you do. They sense that there's something in you that's bigger and meaner than them. My grandsire used to call it big bad wolf syndrome. And um, it takes a long time to gain a rapport with an animal. It's actually really, really difficult. I have a little dog that he's gotten to the point where he follows me around. He does what I ask him to do. And he's a good little guy. He's, he's cool. But it took me forever and blood bonding for him to not just cower in fear and piss on the floor every time I walked into the room. So, difficult. Now imagine a herd of cattle. Oh, yeah, you'd walk stampede. near them and they would stampede. Yeah, and when they get cornered, they run back the other way. It is incredibly dangerous. Not to mention, feeding, you'd have to feed off like four or five cows just to get the type of blood that you need from a human. Not to mention, resonance is almost a known, like, just nothing. So, it's actually kind of easier, more humane to feed on humans I than mean, anything else. If you empty on a cow, that's l uh, less Jeff for the butcher. Yeah, but you'd have to empty on like two. And. You'd have it only one? You also, like. You're still hungry anyway. It's like a, a temporary plus. Not to mention, you would have to get them directly to the butcher if it's not a waste. You'd have to have a butcher on site. Plus, if you hand an exsanguinated cow over to a butcher. The first thing they ask is, why is it exsanguinated? The second thing they might well, ask is, why did you, you bring us this. an exsanguinated cow at 3 a.m.? That's also... Try to find a, a, a butcher that's open past, like, 7 o'clock. Alien attack? Huh? Alien attack? Keep the, Alien attack? Keep this city creepy. <sighs> <laughs> no, if I took a sip, by the way, if I was going to open up a cattle ranch, I would do it like specifically to like butcher my own stuff and send it out. But I just don't want to do that. That's not something I want. Plus, that smell's just gonna stay with you. My dad. Real dad, not sire. My dad was in the cattle ranching business his entire life. They're just good money in there. Like after he got out of the after he got out of the army, up until the day he died. Smart man. And uh, yeah, he I don't know, like nice guy, but like I don't know, you just smell like leather <laughs> constantly. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. So you smell like your trade. True. I guess that's true. Makes me a little worried, truthfully, about me. I smell like other people's blood, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it could be worse. I mean, you're all. I mean, you're working with actual people. I mean, so. Yeah. No, I actually think I do some good. I don't even just keep I don't just keep us fed, but I keep them alive. I was going to say like, it, it isn't like you're just sitting them down at a table and you're just drawing their blood out. Oh no, actually the whole the whole point of it is you get a private curtained off area just you and your companion for the night 
and you order them food that they want. You basically are taking them out on a date, effectively. They eat whatever they want to eat, made by five-star chefs. And because I only hire retired Michelin cooks, and then, nice. and then you feed when you're done with conversation or during conversation or, and a lot of a lot of kindred I've, I actually have a lot of kindred who come in and they don't even feed they just want the attention they just want the communication, I think it kind of helps them keep anchored, like feel a little bit more human. I can see that. Mm. So usually I'm like. You've been fed off of take the rest of the night off, take tomorrow off, like take take your time, get better, come back. But um, I have a lot of them that just enjoy nights. They don't even get fed wrong. Oh well, hell! If I had someone, I mean, if I was still human and I had you know someone feeding me Michelin star and getting paid a damn good yeah wage, I don't think yeah. I'd complain either dream job <laughs> anyway um, <laughs> anyway we don't have Camarilla doesn't really have much in the ways of influence in this city anymore we need to fix that that's what we're doing <coughs> we need to be looking missed slowly expanding Um, kindred places, kindred. Oh, um, uh, there are a couple of uh, spots the Anarchs hang out. Might want to just avoid them, um, just because they are kind of a shoot first, mm -hmm. ask questions later kind of people when it comes to us. Um, uh, there's a bar uh, called the Last Drop. Um. You'll know it. It's got like a picture of a noose and an upside down shot glass in it. Um, it used to be like Gallows Hill for the city. Like they built the bar where the gallows used to be. Um, it's kind of fucked up. There's teenies, which is actually a lot of fun. Um, it's again, it's an anarch establish establishment, but it's like a raid or a rave. And um, you can actually, like, get away with feeding there from time to time as long as the owner knows you're doing it. Um, sometimes they, like, charge for entry for kindred so they can come in and feed and do stuff like that. Um, there's a hookah bar. I can't pronounce the name of the place. Um, also, Anarch owned... So it's like uh, quite snakes? a few anarch owned oh, yeah. establishments. Huh? Snakes? Snakes? Oh, sorry. Uh, ministry? Oh! Uh, the, oh, God. Uh, Asp. Um, oh, the Asp uh, and the uh, Pearl, Pearl, the new place? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's a new place, but I will tell you it's in Hikata territory. I was told by my sire that it might be a ministry place. Really? Ooh, yeah. It's well, well, I guess that makes sense. Asp, Pearl. That's yeah. a Cleopatra reference, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Probably. She was killed by an asp and she drank yeah. a pearl. Mm. Okay. Um, I really don't know. But I also don't go into the New Orleans district very often. Plus, they're building it up right now. So. Did Kata Central? It was. I don't know what it looks like now. I know, I know the dude who owns this place. Mm hmm he used to have another restaurant, and it got torched. Yeah, I heard about that. It was... I heard some dinner parties in there were pretty well damn good. So, you guys are all going to be introduced. Mm -hmm. That's what we've been told. Cool. <laughs> I don't know uh, like I said I don't know where exactly it's going to happen um, there's plenty of nice places around um, I think if they're doing a full on like Elysium event somewhere down the town would be more like the big the, when I say big I don't mean like size wise I just mean like the Camarilla has a lot of influence in it 
I know the biggest place that the Camarilla has influence in is the Ecstasy Lounge. The Ecstasy Gentlemen's Club. I seriously doubt that they're going to hold an Elysium there. That does not happen very often. Elysium and strippers. Sounds fun. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah. Strip the club, make the Elysium. That's owned by the Dracon family, which are the clan venture. Previous Archon? Hmm? Wasn't he the previous Archon? Archon? Is it Archon the... uh... An Archon is a person who is a an agent who works directly under the Justice. How is the, uh, the position in the... I don't remember it. He had the Keeper of position. Or he had the Keeper of Elysium position. The other one, no. Uh, it's, it's been years since we've been... Uh, So when we started playing, like, what was his position? Try to remember. Seneschal? Seneschal. Mm. I don't know, maybe. But until last year, I really didn't do anything. And the only reason I know as much as I do now is because my sire got killed and I was kind of just thrown to the wolves. Ouch. Exactly. <laughs> Like, I was released, kind of, but I'd never really been to an Elysium after that. I kind of just did my own thing and avoided politics. Don't show up unless they call you. Yeah. Don't show up unless they call you. Um, Trying to think of anything that you guys might need to know. Do you guys have any questions? I'm much, much better at answering questions than I am at making stuff up here. Like <laughs> my next, pretty much my my biggest question is mainly for the console or the prince is, what's the next step? Oh, um, well, when I was introduced, um, my. Grandsire was Primogen. Here. Okay. Um, and it was like a big to-do, but it was like one kindred. So I don't really understand this whole, like, let's introduce a bunch of neonates at once kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also I don't know how different it's going to be when it comes to that. Um, the venue, first off, I have no idea what we're looking at. Um, of course, they also might make a big deal this time because it's going to be their first Elysium. The first new kindred in the in city. Quite a while. Yeah. It could very well be a big thing. Um, I was brought in, didn't talk to anybody, was not allowed to talk to anybody until after the prince acknowledged me. They bring you in and they ask you some questions and they ask you if you want to change your name. And things like that. Um, there's a there's there's a kindred who um, I don't have the patience or the capacity to have two identities going at once. I just I don't. So, but like they'll say, "Do you want to be called something else when you're introduced?" And you can give them whatever name you want, and it's actually a safety thing. The way that my sire explained it to me is you can give another name in Elysium so that your real name can still be used to do whatever you're doing on the outside, and if anybody decides that they're going to come after you for any reason, they won't know what name to go for. So it's it's kind of like a safety thing. Um, I decided, since I actually didn't have any jobs worth doing or taking advantage of, that I would just make my business kindred society outside of the politics so I don't care about my name when it comes to that kind of thing um but yeah they ask you questions usually about the traditions and stuff are you guys versed you have no idea how many kindred are out there not versed on that nowadays it's been being drilled in my my school since I was freaking enraged well (laughs) really yeah oh interesting 
Well, I always say it's it drilled, but my side definitely made sure I, I knew used them. a scalpel. Oh, <laughs> sorry, not literally. Cut it into my forearm until it's... I remember it. Oh, you're serious. Hmm? I thought you were joking about him saying drilled, and then you said that. Were you not? Uh, it's an expression. I don't uh, know if he's kidding. I don't. N- neither do I. I don't know if you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm curious. I see. you don't know if you're kidding or not? You have my all. Dude, of the- either crack a smile or say you're serious. <laughs> I will not forget it. Oh my god! What about the drill thing? Did you actually think he drilled it into him? I couldn't see how that would work. Okay. <laughs> well, we heal. Uh, <laughs> That's the good part. <laughs> That's the good thing. Um, um, you you <laughs> would not believe how my sire, what what my sire used to teach me <laughs> the traditions. She, or you, you've heard of like. You know, for musical notes, uh, like people will use every boy. That, yeah, like, yeah, mnemonic yeah, devices. Yeah, she has one for the traditions. Really? Yeah. Are you allowed to share, or is this a personal thing? Let, 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 my curiosity. It, it's too damn funny. Have you met my sire? No. He, he's going to say a name. I've seen her. Dude, just say it. My dad... What is it? My dad always pays hookers with <laughs> dimes. dimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That's horrible. <laughs> but it works. But it works. I will never forget that. Wow. That is the most brouhaha shit I have ever heard from a Tremere. <laughs> from my sire. That's funny. Wow. She wanted to make sure I knew it. See, I got treated like a puppy. <coughs> Lucky. From the point where she decided that she was going to use me for what she was using me for until the day she was until the night she was gone. I was just treated like a pet. I cannot think of one legitimately funny thing that Anna ever said. That's great. What can I say? Like, I laugh at my grandsire a lot because he does weird stuff. But he's not funny. That's hilarious. It really is. The funniest thing. Can't believe I'm saying this. The funniest thing I ever saw happen between my sire and my grandsire was when my sire found out that my grandsire was only a year older than her. There was this massive argument about why he wasn't teaching her and why like, he wasn't sharing his knowledge. And he's so much older than she is. And he's like, I was embraced like a year before you were. That is crazy. I had to leave the apartment. I thought they were going to kill me if they heard me laugh. (laughs) Because she was so mad. So mad. He did, however, always... He did, however, always uh, brag about being the first kindred embraced in the century. So that's pretty cool. He says that he was embraced on the stroke of midnight of December 31st, 1899. But see, what about like different time zones? (laughs) Touche. I don't really know, but that's. I'm gonna have to bring that up to him next time and probably get smacked. Uh, but it'll be worth it. I don't know if, uh, well, definitely the one. The safest thing would be then. to embrace in Greenwich Mean Time, then. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Plan ahead. Don't get embraced in some London, that some London cemetery at midnight on New Year's <laughs> Eve. <laughs> Was it in London? 
Yeah, he um, he said that he didn't want to see another year, so he attempted to kill himself, and his sire saw him doing it, laughed, and embraced him. But London is on Greenwich Mean Time. Oh, well then there you go. Yeah. He, he, seriously, he, he embraced him because he was going to kill himself. He was a Victorian-aged London goth. He didn't want to see the new century. <sighs> now he sees all of them. That sounds like punishment. Sounds like arguing. I've never me. met my great grand or my great grandsire. I don't want to. I've heard some horror stories about the guy. There be monsters here, kind of thing. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just babbling on. Does anybody? We're just killing time. Oh, okay. I mean, that's what we were sent here to do, was to talk and... Yeah, and... get to know each other and stuff. All right, um, so I won't ask personal questions, because rude. Don't ask where people have in and stuff like that. That's rude. Um, you guys know where you can find me. I'm typically at work at the Penny Diners Club, because I keep an eye on everything that goes on over there most of the time. Um... Well, I am typically at the Mystic Moon Occult Shop. Oh, you own that place? Yes. Okay, I've been meaning to go in there. I was actually Wiccan before my embrace. So, well, I guess you never really stop being Wiccan if you believe in it. So, I'm Wiccan, I guess. I haven't really thought about that since my embrace. But yeah, I still do all the stuff. So yeah, that works. Um, okay, so you own the Mystic Moon. Yep. Cool. And I generally try to run events on all the major pagan holidays. That's very cool. That's very cool. We need more of that in this town. And you do the gin. Yeah, I I run uh, Castell Enterprises. Yeah, and you're trying to get stabilized in the city. I'm sure that's not going to be that hard. Um, are you like, you're being released... From like tutelage and your sire and stuff, so you're like gonna be just like moving out on your own and doing your own yes. thing. Oh, that's very cool. I was forced into that, so like being able to do that is is really cool. Hmm. Um, so sorry if I sounded surprised. It's just I people do that is what I get in my head. I just I was always living with my sire. Um, uh, I'm going to do this. It's the most vampire thing ever. And <laughs> he's going to stand up, reach into his back pocket, and pull out a metal case and hand out business cards. I hate doing this. The elders do it, but, like, I have them, and... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I own a business. I've probably got them. That's true. <laughs> oh, my God. But mine will actually say, like, wow. Mystic Moon, have a website, and... You have a collection of three cards. (laughs) White. (laughs) Does everybody at this table actually have business cards? Business owner, business owner, business owner. It's a calling card. Yeah. My my grandsire is, is the kind of person who, an hour before he goes to a place, he sends a ghoul with a card on a silver tray. Like he still does age all, edition. all the Victorian age stuff. It's it's kind of cool, but he's also a cartoon character. So he's gonna get up and uh, he'll finish his he'll finish his glass instinctively. He just kind of runs his finger along the rim, gets as much out of it as he possibly can. Um, I do gotta get going. I gotta shut down the restaurant. Uh, but it was really great meeting you guys. Um, if you guys want to talk before the Elysium event, feel free to give me a call. Um, where you just drop in at the store if you want at the, at the restaurant if you want um, I'll probably definitely be over at your place just cause yeah. it's a kindred owned occult shop by all means and I trust that <laughs> Not I, I trust that a little bit more than the other one that may or may not be apparently ministry or a Coptic I don't know um, but yeah you guys have a good night and uh, if I don't see you beforehand, I'll see you at the Elysium. I'll Talk be there for that. Okay. It's going to get up and 
customarily shake all of your hands one more time and then politician head out the door. <laughs> he does not have one. Or he does not understand politician Here, take hands. This one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he'll shake your hands. He'll take off. All right, and it's about one o'clock, so. Yeah, it's about an hour past what time I typically like to end, but I wanted to give you guys a yeah, chance fun, though. to interact. How do you guys end your time here? I mean, we're still waiting on a fourth person. Who was uh, obviously not Obviously coming. not. Apparently not at this point. Well, me, I'm finishing the... I'm literally gulping the whole thing. As I said, if either of you need me, I'm at the Mystic Moon Occult Shop. Oh, it's in yeah, much at the bottom. Old Town in Portland. Hog. And, uh... Yeah, he'll tip back what's, uh, whatever's left in his glass, and, uh... Mm-hmm. That's... Savages. Savages. Seems to be the word for the night. Savages. So you guys are alone in this room. Alright. You will... Do- does does any of you, for some reason, not have a, t- a phone, a cell phone? Nope. Your okay. sires you would have. drill it into your heads that you do not discuss vampiric anything over a cell phone or in text. If you have to say, if you're meeting somebody somewhere for vampiric reasons, you can discuss Got it. places, you can discuss people but do not discuss reasons and a lot of times is having an established meeting place and meet me at that place where we talk sometimes it's always a good thing (laughs) um but you will all eventually it's probably verging on midnight in character right now will end up getting texts that they're outside when you're ready no rush oh great the limit's outside All right. I, I, I believe our chaperones have arrived. Probably within five minutes of each other, you're all going to get texts. All righty. Well, you guys have a good night. It's, it's been refreshing. I look forward to meeting it's been all of you again. I'm going to stand up, tuck in the... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just say goodbye. Why linger? Yeah. I'm going to stand up, push my chair back in. Yeah, just... And uh, before I leave, I think if Sonny's out on the floor, I'll thank him again for his accommodations. It is around closing time of the restaurant. Mm. Your host is on stage singing... My Natural. As he does every night at midnight. Oh, nice. That is how the place closes every time. He has a very good voice. And more, mm. much more than that. He sings it his way. Mm. Like, he doesn't even give anybody, like, notice that it's going to happen. The way that they basically go last call is he stands up and goes, and now the end is near, and then just goes on to my way, like... Nice. Yes, that's how the that's how the restaurant closes. And unless anybody has anything else they need to do, I'm going to call post.